Hello, I'm the Red Monk, and this video is a video in response made of another video, and there was this, uh, soy boy, this pale soy boy named H-Bomber Guy, and he made this video called Pathologic is Genius, and Here's Why, and in that uh, video, he just goes into detail about a game, tells a story, and the game's from 2005, and... It's called Pathologic, and I played it, and it was fucking amazing. This game is so fucking cool. And uh, this video that this H-Bomber guy, this soy boy made, uh, he said that one of the characters were really bad. Like, when he made the video, he put a filter. And in the video, he talked about how this character named Daniel Danvrisky is just, he doesn't like his mindset. He calls him stupid, and that's wrong. And I think in this video, now that, you know, I went and played the game, uh, I've seen it from a different perspective, and I've seen that this, uh, Dan Yodan Visky, this bachelor dude, he is just another dude. He's just another character in the fucking story. He's not this, like, giant evil dude that was, uh, made out in that, uh, video, that, uh, pathologic is genius and here's why. So this video, we're gonna do some justice to Daniel's name. And we're going to say some things, look over that video and see that this is, this is just another character in the story. And now he's a, this game is called uh, Pathologic. It's from 2005 and, and it's fucking amazing. It's a, it's like a survival horror game in 1816 in this like Barack Russian town in this steppe. And in this game, you just walk around this town and it gets a plague and the point of the game is that like you're just a dude in the town like you're not special and like you can die like anyone else and it's really existential and uh you know in this in this game there are uh some doctors that come to this russian town all right now it's 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 like 1816 so there's like no phones you know it's a small town and there's a different ba uh, different doctors that go to this uh, Russian town right as the plague starts. And you play as a doctor, just trying to find the cure for the plague. And uh, they're the two main doctors, there's three doctors you can play, but the, I think the main two of the story are uh, Daniel Danvisky, okay, he's called The Bachelor, and then Artemi Barak, and he is, I think, the Haruspex, and... The story, the plot of the game is how these, uh, you know, two different characters go into the world and try to solve the issue. And, uh, if you play as the Bachelor, the Haruspex also is in the world too, and you talk to him throughout the story. But if you play the Haruspex, you meet the Bachelor. So it's literally, like, you're just, uh, you're just taking eyes into the story. You're just taking a perspective when you pick a character. It's about this, this Russian town. This Russian step town that gets the plague, and the main the main message of the game is how uh, uh, Daniel Danvisky and Artemi Barak are just uh, two di different entities. You're not you're just supposed to witness them in the story. You're not supposed to the game itself. You can have opinions about the characters themselves, but uh, in this game, you're just supposed to see the characters. You know, they're just supposed to have personalities. And uh, H-Bomber Guy's video, uh, you know, he definitely got into talking about how, you know, uh, Daniel Danvisky is like a utopian and how he's represented by the polyhedron. And But he said that's a bad thing. And in fact, if you're going to accurately, you know, you gotta, you can't you can't put a filter on it, right? And the game doesn't try to convince you that the, the Daniel Danvisky is a bad person. Now, uh, the mindset of uh, Daniel Danvisky is that he is literally in the game says he's a utopian, right? He comes to this Russian town. He comes to this Russian town to meet up with one of his colleagues because he is a doctor and he's trying to find the cure for death. This nigga is trying to cure death. And that's him. He has this uh, super, like, altruistic utopian goal of curing death. And he comes from the big city to this rural Russian town, and they call him, like, the big city guest. Like, he's an outsider, and he comes in, and, uh, he realizes that his colleague died, 
And then within the next few days, he finds out there's a plague. And uh, he takes his own way to solving it later on. And the other character is this guy named uh, Artemi Barak. And he is supposed to be a, a man of the earth. Right? He comes to... He just finished getting his uh, surgeon training in. And he comes back to visit his father. And he is more of a, a man of the earth. Right? He, is, uh, he came from this town. And he meant to meet his father. And one of the most important parts of this game is that Artemi Barak... Uh, follows in Isidore's footsteps. He follows in his father's footsteps, which is a really important thing about his character. And you can see, you know, these different ideals because there's different structures in the game that, you know, represent each character. Uh, the bachelor, who's supposed to be this, you know, utopian. You know, he, he, when he plays the game, he talks to a lot of the town's elites and stuff, and he is, goes in and out and is around of this building called the polyhedron. And it, it, you can see what it looks like. This is this game's a little bit pretentious, but you can see how it's this giant... Uh, it's made of cardboard. It looks like glass, but it's a giant white tower hanging in the sky. And it's very uh, idealistic. And even when you walk through it, you can see how it's narrow stairs that like surround it as you... Uh, climb down and around it and it is just this giant uh, utopian structure that represents you know the bachelor's ideals it's the the polyhedron it's a uh, it's utopian this utopia and um but but uh artemi barak the Harrisbex, is a man of the earth and his uh structure which is on the other side of the town you can see how there's a polyhedron and on the other side, there is the abattoir. And it literally is just a mound of dirt. It's literally just a fucking big mound of dirt. And it's called the abattoir. And it is, you know, Artemi Barak follows in his father's footsteps. Right? He's a man of the earth. And it's just a mound of earth. Right? Like he's, him and his uh, family, he's a, he's a doctor, but him and his people are, um, they're farmers. They have like bulls and stuff. And as you walk through the abattoir, it's like this, it's all flat, and there's just corridors leading each way. And you can see how it's just, uh, everything sort of looks the same. It's all this muddy feeling, and you just kind of, by instinct, you know, that instinct, you have to know where to go. And it's all these narrow hallways. And uh, that's what the game's about. No... Yeah, uh, but the battle is supposed to be worse than the hair specs. No one's supposed to be better. They're just two existent things in this world, and the game just tries to portray their existence. And uh, you know, just like the Bachelor, uh, just the Bachelor and the hair specs are both leaves in the wind. You know, they're both leaves in the wind. And in H. Palmer guy's video, it's like two fucking hours. And he does say this stuff, but he also says very, very crude things to my boy Daniel. So we are going to write that round, and we are going to look at some clips from the video, and uh, try to see where the truth is. Now, before I get into this, I really, this video made by the Soy Boy made me play the game in the first place, and I love the fucking video, but uh, I just think we need to... Repair the the public image of my of my, my my boy the bachelor. The bachelor is such a piece of shit. Look how he talks to this poor woman. This is incredible characterization. Like you're just stuck in the body of this pretentious buffoon. It's great. In conversation with the Harrispex, Aspity casually refers to the bachelor as the prickly prick that'll bury us all. The bachelor's plot is. L you learn more about aspects of the plot the town jester had no idea about. For example, you are the reason the Stomatins never turned up on day two when cowardly little Dankowski tried to flee the town. Marie okay, okay, this is true, okay? In, like, day two, uh, the Bachelor, when he found out that there was actually a plague going on, he just tried to leave the fucking town. He tried to leave the fucking town. And, uh, each one of my guys calls him a fucking coward for it, Okay? It's like, okay, first off, in general, okay, if there was a, a fucking plague going on, and I, and I was a doctor, and I knew what a fucking plague was, I'd get the fuck out of there. You know, I may be 
send a few doctors over and send the message out. But I don't blame him because like later in the game, you just like you just see fucking corpses. He like gets fucking shot and shit. I don't blame him. I don't call him cowardice for uh, just sitting in a fucking town. Like if that was my hometown, I would have stayed. But like that's not even. He was just there on a vacation, and he's a you know he's a utopianist. He is a he's a black and white goal, and that is his uh, goal to cure death. They call it uh, Project Thanica. Like he has his goal. He has his utopian dream, and uh, it's not in that fucking town. And it's not even his home fucking town. So, like, I don't, I don't blame him for leaving the town. Uh, it's, it's more of a statement that he has his goal. You know, he, he has his goal. And, uh, he, staying in that town would have just been dangerous and stupid. He is not a fucking coward. He's not a fucking coward. What kind of backward practices are these? Another, another, uh, aspect of his uh of the bachelor's character is that he hates the culture of the area and you know a lot of the game you just trying to you clash him with like these town's traditions to try to cure the plague uh and this actually makes him unknown to these like herbal remedies that the hair specs makes that are like really powerful and um he in the bachelor is justified in the way he thinks he, the bachelor is justified because uh uh, another doctor who, you know, lives in the town already, his name's uh, Stanzilar Rubin. And in the game, uh, there's this uh, rich old dude, his name's Simon Kane. The Bachelor, this is actually was the man the Bachelor came to the town to meet. And uh, he's this, uh, you know, well-respected figure. And uh, Simon died. And there's this uh, town's tradition that they don't uh, mess with the corpses for, like, uh, a full 24 hours like they leave the corpse isolated for 24 hours it's a tradition of the culture and uh, the bachelor is always fighting with them and he's justified because uh, the, the Stanislaw Rubin doctor uh, violated that uh, 24 hour tradition by uh, stealing Simon's corpse to make vaccines to, to save people's lives and the bachelor sees this happen and sees Rubin get like the, the, he just disappears. Like, he's, I'm going to turn myself in, and you don't hear anything from him anymore. Right? And he was saving lives. And the Bachelor sees this, and it affects his opinion. You know, he's a limited perspective. And, you know, throughout his entire life as a doctor, he was taught of, you know, this materialistic view. And he sees the consequences of these beliefs. Uh, they hinder his progress to try to save lives. So he hates the beliefs. You know, not the townspeople themselves. He doesn't hate the townspeople themselves. But he hates their uh, old-fashioned traditions. You also learn how badly you'd accidentally messed a lot of things up as the Bachelor without even knowing it. Late in the game, when you've learned a lot of the mystery and figured out at last how to make a cure for the plague, but only in extremely limited quantities whose source ingredient is almost impossible to get, there's one side quest where a giant bull mysteriously appears, stuck to a giant stake. The giant bull's blood can be used as a source of the cure. You get some from the bull and make arrangements to get it pulled off the stake and rescued properly the next day, which might even give you enough to save the whole town. Then you remember that when you were the Bachelor, there was a side quest featuring a staked bull surrounded by people, which was a clear health hazard. What if people congregating like that spreads the plague? Or what if they're planning a riot? So you nonchalantly ordered the bull to be burned and thought nothing of it. Dankowski, you prickly prick! You've buried us all- Now late- in the game, there's this, uh, there's this bull that just appears from the earth. This is an entire other aspect of the game of how the disease came from the dirt and how it seeps through the ground. So through the ground, it seeped out a giant magical bull. And the bachelor kills it. <laughs> and, you know, his, his attentions aren't bad, but there's this bull appears from the ground and its blood can be made into the cure. And the hair respect sees this, and he's actively, like, working to, like, you know, get the bull alive so that he can, you know, draw more blood from it. And the bachelor sees this, and in his limited perspective, he fucking kills it. 
he fucking kills it, which removed one of the ways to solve the fucking plague. This was a bad thing that happened. But it is only a consequence of the Bachelor's limited perspective. And uh, the Bachelor, when you play as him and you go over to this magical bull, you, the people are called troublemakers. Uh, you know? And he's uh, he's researching it, and if you talk to the Bachelor as the hair specs, he'll say that the blood was like perforating uh, spores of the disease or something gross. So, uh, with the Bachelor's perspective, he sees uh, a ton of fucking, like a riot going on. He thinks some troublemakers, and this bull is spreading the flag. So, it, he wasn't uh, he was not at all a good person in that situation, but he wasn't fucking evil. You know, that was not, that was not, if he knew that there could be a cure for the plague somehow magically, if you convince him it, he wouldn't have killed it. But the one thing the Bachelor does that I think is total fucking bullshit that I really fucking hate him for is the fucking prickly little prick killed the hunchback. The, the hunchback was one of the best characters in the entire fucking game. And as uh, Artemi, uh, you could talk to the hunchback and he's so helpful because you could give him organs and you could get bandages. And you get so many fucking bandages. And then like late in the game, he just disappears and you're like, oh yeah, the bachelor fucking killed him. He fucking shot him. The player's text options relate that the character they're inhabiting can be a total asshole. But could I please offer you a piece of advice? I need no advice. I mean, look at this choice. This is something The Bachelor thought to say. You're supposed to be asking this guy for help, Daniel! What the fuck are you doing?! Several characters in the story have the power to predict the future, and The Bachelor has the power to be a dismissive piece of shit to all of them. The Bachelor says things that he must think in his head sound really cool, but to say to another person is like super weird. You are broken, Lara. I, on the other hand, am used to winning. <laughs> At numerous points in the game, you can just randomly say a Latin phrase to try and sound clever. Medica morbo ad hibe. Yet again, this is just a character trait, yes. Uh, the bachelor is kind of pretentious. He's a very, uh, he's very stuck up, which is, I, I like, which is just a character flaw. It's just, uh, he's a part. He's just, he's just a person, and one of his flaws is that he's a pretentious prick. <laughs> and like randomly in conversation, he'll just speak in Latin. Like you'll be talking to him, and he'd just be like "medica morbe," like in conversation, like such a fucking prick. Uh, he's not. Fucking perfect. This isn't the fucking Superman comics where like everyone's this is the this is a perfect good person. He's just he's just morally all I'm saying is that he's morally on par with the hair specs and he's not flawless, he's just a fucking dude. You know, and in the game, he does what he has to do. Right? This is you have to understand, this isn't fucking like you're at fucking Walmart. This, they're in a fucking town where fucking giant plague clouds are flying at him where they're like seeing corpses and they're just like nearly starving to death he the bachelor does what he has to do to survive uh you know he was uh he was dealt a better hand than the hair specs but uh the hair specs does a lot of fucking bullshit because he's you know in the same town he's in the same situation like he kills several children you know i guess he could be uh he did what he had to do, but the hair respect kills it. so many people. And, uh, you know, both uh, characters did what they have to do uh, to survive. And they, uh, they risked their life to try to find a solution to the town. Right? And at least the bachelor well, you know, was in the same fucking town, and he managed to find a cure, uh, a vaccine, without uh, killing children multiple times. The hair specs has flaws as well. You know, he's just another person. You know, he's not... The hair specs isn't bad, but he has flaws, right? And on the first fucking day of uh, the third playthrough, uh, the Changeling playthrough, you literally... The first time you ever meet uh, the hair specs, you walk into this room, and he's just fucking there. And he's like, uh, yeah, the, the guy I was with uh, he got away, and there was a uh, there's no uh, way I, I could have possibly helped him. So I went to go get my tools. He was gonna just cut up a fucking dude. Like the first time you see him, 
uh, there's this uh, injured dude, this uh, uh, injured factory worker, and uh, he goes to the hair specs, and he is uh, he's bleeding out, and the hair specs sees him, and he's like, yeah, he's out of fucking hope. Yeah, he's just fucking dead. So literally, no joke, he goes to get his tools to steal his fucking organs. Like, uh, what the fuck? The, uh, at least Artemi doesn't fucking do that. He doesn't cut organs out of living people. <laughs> and, like, throughout the game, when you play as uh, Artemi, he does that, like, 40 fucking times. He, like, cuts organs out of so many fucking people. Now, uh, when people say that The Bachelor is evil, they mainly point to his ending, right? Because in this game, there's uh, three different endings, and each character has their own ending. And The Bachelor's ending is uh why people say he's evil and he, what his ending is is that he just blows up the fucking town right like uh, each character has their own ending and in the bachelor's ending he chooses to uh cannon the whole town and save the polyhedron and the Harrisbex chooses to destroy the polyhedron but not uh bomb the town now you know the uh, the bachelor uh, he made sure all the healthy people were evacuated and he made a vaccine. And, you know, if you had the plague and you were in that town, you would just get fucking bombed. He, he, uh, just cuts his fucking losses, right? And people say, uh, that makes him, that makes him evil because he destroyed the town. But the, the Harrisbex, he destroys the, the polyhedron and finds a cure. Now, uh, you know, people say this is a better ending. And, it is only a metaphor. I mean, whether you look at, you know, morally what's better, uh, the polyhedron is a, is a metaphor for like a utopian dream and the town is just a fucking town. You know, it's the, it's the abattoir. It's just a fucking, it's the fucking dirt. And, uh, you know, the bat, the bachelor chooses to preserve the, the polyhedron because, you know, he's the big city guest. He's the, he's the dreamer. So he just cuts his fucking losses. And chooses the the polyhedron. It's a metaphor, and uh, the the Harrisbex chooses to uh, preserve the town and destroy the polyhedron because the metaphor for he's a man of the earth, right? And another thing about the game is that um, that could be said about uh, if we want to try to decide the characters as people and if they made you know proper moral choices or if they're just fucking dick bags for the fuck of it, uh. You can pick the other character's endings as a character. So let's say uh, you are playing the hair specs. And uh, if you are able to uh, cure your bound. If you are able to excel in the game and like cure a lot of people. And do a lot of difficult stuff throughout the game. You can actually go up to another character. Uh, and pick their ending instead. Like here. Like, like here I am playing. I'm playing Artemi. And I'm able to, uh, and I did this, I cured enough people that I was able to talk to the, the bachelor. And he said, uh, okay, you can pick my ending. Because, uh, if you're playing, uh, one character, all the other characters fail. They all fuck up. And you're the only one that succeeds, so you choose your own ending. But, you can also go back and talk to the other characters in the game. And they'll give you their ending. Right? They'll give you their ending. You can talk to them. So even then, I think the probably the best ending is because the, the hair specs f- does a lot of fucking evil stuff throughout his playthrough. The bat, the, a lot of shit, negative shit occurs because of the hair specs just in terms of people he fucking killed. That you can pick the fucking bachelor and then talk to the changeling and pick her ending. Which is like the ultimate good ending. I think if anything, the, the game developers were attempting to uh, persuade the player into the the ideals of Changeling's ending. So you could you could just talk to the fucking Changeling as a bachelor, you know, cure all of her bound, and you can get her ending, which is just the same. You know, it's just the bachelor's ending. It's not the bachelor's true fucking choice. Same thing about the Harry Specs, same thing about the fucking Changeling. Now, uh, Bachelor, you now he helps the, the town leaders, the Utopians, which 
is his impossible ghoul, right? His, uh, his project Thanica. He comes to the town with the ghoul of curing death. You know, he's, he's a black and white impossible tool. And, uh, he comes from the, he comes from the big town. This is, this is, this is clever as fuck. Um, he comes from the fucking town. He comes from, a. Uh, He comes from the big city, right? The bachelor comes from the big city. He is supposed to be, he's more, uh, he's more positive some. You know, he's more, he's more new age. He's more, uh, more progressive. I guess you could say in a sense, in a political sense, he's the bachelor is more progressive. He comes from the big city and he's more positive some. But the hair specs and his uh, people are fucking farmers. They have fucking bulls. They, they, they have farming and they're more of the zero sum. Or because they'll have to be fucking farmers because the farming fucking sucks. So, um... And you can sort of see it as the, the hair specs is not as much as a soy boy as a bachelor. He's not as progressive. He's more of an old age, more of, you know, doing what has been done before, falling in his father's footsteps. And so he's more of a... He's more zero or something. He's more of, you know, older age. And the bachelor comes from the fucking big city. And the fucking hair specs is a fucking farmer. He's not a farmer, he's a surgeon, but, uh, he works with the farmers. And, you know, works to preserve the, the royal step town. And, you know, the, uh, the bachelor is attempting to, like, build this better world. And the hair specs is more about staying in the current, uh, folksy way. And, you know, staying with the traditions. While the bachelor is trying to fuck the traditions and do what's best. And you know, just because the the bachelor is a pretentious in dialogue and speaks in Latin in English conversation, you know, doesn't mean that he isn't trying to you know save the town and work with his uh his, his like utopian dream of you know curing death. You know his intentions are in the right place, and um, in the end, if you think about it, the this character the bachelor could have just locked himself. And fucking Eva Yan's house and hide out the fucking plague if he couldn't run away when he tried to. But no, he goes out there and tries to solve it, right? He's a good person. You know, the, the hair specs does some evil fucking shit, but his his intentions and his end goal, and when he does it, it's an excellent thing. He saved a lot of life. And, you know, both characters are just people, very futile beings who are just trying to fucking cure the fucking plague. So. You know, the Bachelor is more positive some, the hair specs is more zero some, and they just sort of exist. Okay. All in all, uh, that H Bombs video wasn't I wasn't at all bad. I liked the video and it made me play the game in the first place and I love the fucking game. And like each bomber guy like inspired me to start to start making weird liberal videos in the first place. But I think that, that he really, really painted The Bachelor in a very derogatory way. And, like, The Bachelor is my favorite fucking character in that game. He is so fucking cool. Truth. It's like fucking uh, Harris Bergeon. You ever read that in fucking high school? How it's not supposed to convince you to one side. There's just the, the, the new age people. You know? The, the the positive sum people and then the, the zero sum farmers. You're not supposed to pick one or the other and if you want to hear my fucking opinion, I like the fucking bachelor more. You know? Like, I don't, the hair specs he's just fucking weird. I don't trust him. I like the bachelor more. And in this game, uh, you can choose which one you like as a person, but the game itself it just says that there are two uh Different existing, uh, counteracting, uh, things that exist. Ideals. Ideals. Alright, bye now.